The lack of existing intelligent life in the proximities of the Earth does not mean that it cannot be found in other parts of the universe. Nothing is impossible within the magnitudes and dimensions of the cosmos. The universe has hundreds of thousands of galaxies, which at the same time have thousands of millions of stars, some of which are accompanied by planets. There are so many possibilities that we have to search far beyond the limits of the solar system. In 1996, the first extrasolar planets were detected, and since then their numbers have increased unceasingly, adding up to hundreds of them today. Most of them are big planets, normally located very close to their corresponding sun. The main difficulty is that they cannot be observed directly yet. Their existence is a deduction made from the behavior of the star. The most successful technique so far for finding planets around other stars is the so-called radial velocity or spectroscopic technique. This technique is an indirect technique. You don't actually see the planet. What you see instead is the star moving around the center of mass of the planet-star system. That is, we all are familiar with planets moving around a star, but in addition, the star moves around on a much smaller orbit, the center of mass of the star-planet system. So we detect the planets by seeing the star move around, and we detect the stellar motion by looking at the line of sight changes in the velocity of the star using this, the Doppler technique, which you're familiar with from hearing a train whistle as a train is coming towards you or away from you. Same thing with the star. The star as it's coming towards you, its light is shifted towards the blue as it's moving away from us, it's shifted towards the red. So by watching very carefully how the spectral lines of the star change with time, one can infer that the star is moving back and forth on its orbit and something must be causing that motion and we now know that that is actually a planet. NASA and the European Space Agency plan to place infrared telescopes in space in order to observe the extrasolar planets directly. If they have an atmosphere, that would be a good sign, since an atmosphere normally regulates extreme temperatures, which are found quite frequently on many planets. The telescopes will analyze these atmospheres in order to find evidence of the necessary chemical elements for life to be produced. Oxygen, which is present in our atmosphere, is one of the key signs of life, but it is not the only element that they are looking for. There is also the signature of CO2, carbon dioxide, and water vapor. And these three compounds are all involved in the reaction that uh, produce oxygen by biology, which is oxygenic photosynthesis. And if there, there are these three signatures, it could be a very, very good indicator for the presence of some photosynthetic activity. And another signature uh, is the, the, the signature, spectroscopic signature of methane, um, because it's, it seems that the primitive life forms on Earth uh, could have produced huge amount of methane in the atmosphere and uh, this could be detected uh, with uh, very efficient telescopes. And the possibility of an intelligent civilization in some corner of the universe has encouraged the sending of messages into outer space. These images place us in the year 1974 when a communication was broadcast from Arecibo, Puerto Rico towards a dense ball of stars located 25,000 light years away from us. If someone was able to decode the message, he or she, or it, would find a pictogram explaining the foundations of life on Earth. Meanwhile, some spacecraft sent into outer space, which are never going to return to Earth, have engraved plaques about who we are. The Voyager spaceships, more specifically, have all kinds of sounds and images, even those of animals, tribal songs, and a Beethoven string quartet. But almost 40,000 years will have passed before the Voyager approaches the first star. The SETI program is another initiative for establishing contact. They are doing more than just sending messages. 
They are now trying to receive them. That is, if there is an alien civilization that uses radio waves in its interstellar communications. Two powerful radio telescopes are being used to detect radio signals from space, which are later analyzed in an enormous computer. Information is so abundant that the SETI program allows anyone who wants to use his or her computer to help with this task of distinguishing captured signals. When the computer is resting, a program is activated to analyze the data provided by the central computer. Almost three million people collaborate with the SETI program. Some curious signals have been detected, but after being thoroughly investigated, it has been proved that they were nothing more than telecommunication equipment interferences. To date, we have not received news from outer space. Western culture suffered an earthquake when Copernicus discovered that the Earth and man were not the center of the universe, but mere extras in a corner of the cosmos. The discovery of planets revolving around other stars now shows us that planets are a common occurrence. With this knowledge, someday it may be possible to solve the question of whether we, as the inhabitants of the Earth, do or don't represent the only life forms in the universe. If we find living beings in other parts of the universe, it will be, without a doubt, the most important discovery in the history of mankind. We will therefore be able to show, and in a palpable way, that life is a consequence of the evolution of the universe. Furthermore, since we proudly believe that we are unique and the most powerful living beings, we will realize that we are nothing more than a coincidence, frozen in the evolution of the universe. This will add in an important way to our understanding of humility. As human beings, we should be humble, not only with respect to ourselves, but also with respect to other species that live on the planet. We should also give life the respect it deserves in every aspect. If you imagine looking out above the Earth's atmosphere into the dark, starry night, and imagining the immensity of the universe, it would be rather uh, discomforting to think that we are the only sentient beings out there. I think it would make the universe a much, feel like a much more pleasant place if we realize that somewhere out there on another rock orbiting another star like our own could be a, another sort of being, perhaps similar to us, perhaps not so similar, looking back in our direction and wondering if we existed. Life beyond Earth is today a hypothesis more than a certainty. A new science, astrobiology, is knocking on the gates of the universe once again with more improved technical equipment and greater knowledge. The cosmos will shine then with greater magnificence and man will be amazed once again before this manifestation. After all, life, why not? just might emerge at any moment or in any place and in whatever form it chooses.